A little while ago, we addressed the not always authentic panic about what happens to EVs at the end of their first in-car life. There's a link up here and down in the description for those watching on platforms that make it look like I'm just waving at empty space. If you missed that video, the TLDR is that after their first use in cars, battery packs can be reused in a bunch of ways, sometimes as whole entire packs, or the modules can be removed and good ones used to repair old cars, and the less strong ones used in more battery retirement friendly options like stationary energy storage. There's a lot more detail, so I recommend a watch if you haven't, but then I would, wouldn't I? But all that said, batteries do eventually wear out. The internal resistance rises, the ability to store energy decreases, and after maybe a quarter century of use, those packs are going to have done all the energy storage they can. So then we're going to toss them in a landfill. At least if you look at the comments on many of our videos, that's what's going to happen. But it turns out that thinking about things for a hot minute and then posting your opinion isn't always a great way to get accurate information. So today we're going to look at what happens when those batteries really do reach the end of their lives. Because as farm girl Nikki is fond of saying, claiming that they're just sent to a landfill is a load of bovine byproduct. But first, well I heard about the channel you've been viewing with all over the neighborhood. So why didn't you ask us baby? Didn't you think we could? Well I know that a subscription is out of sight, but to shake a notification bell tonight, would it happen to you and me, baby? We'll show you how to charge it right. Yeah, or maybe not. Transport Evolved's proprietary blend of fresh as a daisy news, reviews and context is supported by viewers like you and by me, Mauling Song Lyrics. And if you'd like me to stop or continue, hang out till the end of the video when I'll tell you how you can support the channel. It's pretty much a truism that recycled things aren't as good as the original not recycled thing. That's often down to the poca curante approach that both countries and individuals take to recycling, uh, with wish cycling of non-recyclable objects contaminating the recycling streams and recyclable stuff ending up in the trash. Not to mention all those drinks companies coming up with their greenwashing of drink bottles to make it feel like you're to blame for all those plastic bottles when it's really they who opted not to use glass. So while with metals and glass that statement is not necessarily true, with oil-based plastic, recycling often means turning it into something not as useful as the original object, but that we can at least not throw in a landfill. Things like plastic and resin deck boards or street furniture. That's in part down to the difficulty of accurately separating plastics into their many different flavours, not aided by the plastic industry's deliberate obfuscation of which plastics are actually recyclable. But that's a whole other rant. However, recycled batteries aren't kin of plastics in that way. And it turns out that unlike the output from a food replicator, there's a possibility that recycled EV batteries might be better than their virgin material sisters. So let's take a dip into the world of EV recycling and see where we're at. So you've got your dead cells that have been through lives in at least one, possibly two cars, and then spent some time in a tuk-tuk or a scooter or an energy storage project. And now they're not able to effectively store charge. These then need to be recycled. Now an oft-cited figure is that only about 5% of lithium batteries are recycled at present. I've seen it in the comments enough times that it appears in my dreams. But that figure includes batteries in laptops, cell phones, scooters, e-bikes, personal massage devices, headphones, everything that we've taken to throwing lithium batteries into because of their high energy density. It took me a little detective work to find out why that figure has been linked to cars, and it appears in a Department of Energy Vehicle Technologies Office report from 2019. I contacted Call to Recycle, who are cited as the origin of that figure, and I had a few clarifying questions which I sent them. And while they answered, they weren't able to provide actual answers to my questions. So my current reading of the information is that it looks like it's for all lithium batteries, not EV batteries alone. The 2021 Lithium Battery Lifecycle Report from Circular Energy Storage Research and Consulting suggests that the proportion of EV batteries as a whole was only around 1.4% of all lithium batteries available to recycle. 
So that 5% figure is almost certainly bullpucky, to quote another spiky-haired dyke. In its most recent report, Call to Recycle indicate that in the US there's been around a 12.3% increase in collections. That means that the percentage of all lithium batteries recycled is probably still a pretty woeful 6-ish percent. That's inadequate. However, EV batteries are a bit of a special case. Unlike the batteries in your drill or your USB charged portable mongoose fluffer, which if you don't know better might end up in landfill or at least in the trash, or maybe mouldering away in a drawer of a tool chest when the batteries die, which incidentally is a bad idea, lithium batteries should be recycled. Cars tend to go to specialists for disposal, which makes collecting the batteries somewhat easier. Where that figure is for cars depends on the manufacturer and how the car was disposed of, all of which is information that's kinda hard to get. Tesla's 2021 impact report states that they intend to recycle 100% of batteries with a 92% material recovery rate for batteries that have been through the process. Although it makes clear that at present it is receiving back very few batteries, quote, from the field, probably because Tesla packs are highly sought after for second uses in conversions. Volkswagen is targeting a greater than 90% recovery rate overall for its recycling process, and BMW is working to implement a circular economy process for its packs that it hopes will halve the carbon footprint of its battery packs overall. Which is all very laudable, but we need to see how that stuff actually works when packs start rolling in. And the question then is, how do we get packs to roll in? Because across the world, rules about lithium battery recycling are... Well, let's just say there are different approaches. The European Union is in the process of drafting resolutions for the bloc. Current proposals include a comprehensive framework of rules regarding the sale, use, design and recycling of lithium batteries with responsibilities for everyone from the manufacturers to the end users and the recyclers set out clearly. There are proposals to include battery passports with the origin of materials in the batteries being traceable to enable customers to accurately gauge the battery's environmental impact. What the UK will do, being as it's now outside the EU, is entirely up in the air and given that the government last year decided dumping raw sewage in the rivers was fine, I'm not currently hugely optimistic about its plans, but they will probably involve inches and pounds. At the moment, the US is, of course, complicated. Federal, state and local governments all have various bits of authority over the disposal and recycling of lithium batteries, and there are, as yet, no specific federal laws for EV batteries. However, discussions are ongoing about the creation of those laws and regulatory frameworks, mainly using the Mercury Containing and Battery Management Act, and the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act as possible templates. China, on the other hand, is ahead of the game here. That's probably because it's seen a massive shift to electrification, so it has extended existing regulations relating to the disposal of lead-acid batteries, as well as implementing lithium battery-specific guidelines to cover the manufacturing, collection and recycling of used batteries. And it's almost certainly that which has driven BMW, among other manufacturers, to prioritise recycling of batteries in China. There, for example, the BMW Brilliance Automotive Joint Venture has established a closed loop for reuse of raw materials from high-voltage batteries that are no longer suitable for use in electric vehicles. That program at the moment takes batteries from fully and partially electric development vehicles, test systems and production rejects and is planned to also accept end-of-life vehicle batteries. As I stated back in that first video on this topic, one of the challenges is that lithium batteries are, in general, lasting much longer than expected, so manufacturers are still waiting for the anticipated flood of worn-out EV batteries because they're just not worn out yet. Despite that, we've seen Volkswagen announce its own battery recycling scheme and companies from Northvolt and Redwood Materials partnering with multiple automakers, and of course Tesla's long recycled its own batteries. Okay, so everyone and their dog has plans in place, but there aren't really a lot of batteries to test it on just yet. As to the question of how does recycling work, there are a variety of approaches, some of which involve chemical separation or what's called pyrometallurgical processes, where the batteries are melted. In this case, the aim is really just to recover the, quote, high value materials. These are more traditional and generally result in somewhere around 50% of material recovery. 
What has happened recently is that the push towards circular economies has led to a shift to recover more materials from the batteries. Not just the fancy hard to get things, but also the metals that make up the casings, for example. These processes often involve shredding the batteries and taking that shredded material stream, pulling out the copper and aluminium, or aluminum if you prefer, and then taking the salts and the electrolyte and separating them out. But why bother recycling? First up, and perhaps most obviously, there's the cost benefit. These materials are valuable, and as we start to put more and more emphasis on keeping a livable planet, then continuing to rip up vast swathes of undamaged land to pull out materials and in the process polluting it is becoming less and less socially acceptable. Although there are some other methods of getting materials. We made a whole video about that too. There's also that dumping these batteries in a hole in the ground would be incredibly polluting, so it's best that we don't. Also, setting fire to things underground which would likely happen if a damaged lithium battery was just thrown in a heap of lithium batteries that can be really bad, and if you don't believe me, look up the fire in Centralia, Pennsylvania. But to go back to that truism that we started with, won't we just end up with worse batteries? Recycled batteries surely can't be as good as the ones made with fresh, shiny stuff dug up from the ground. Can they? Well, recently there have been several papers come out that suggest that no, they're not as good as virgin material batteries. They're better. A recent article in Joule cites the fact that while the crystalline structure of batteries made from recycled and virgin materials looks similar under a scanning electron microscope, the tap density, literally the density when you put the powder in a container and tap it a specified amount, so how tightly it packs together, the tap density of recycled materials is lower, making a larger pore volume for the same size of particle. Along with that, the recycled powders have a lower degree of lithium and nickel cation mixing, and the resultant powder has a lower binding energy. Ooh, that was a lot of words, wasn't it? And I'm not going to pretend to know what all of them mean, because... Damn it, Jim! I'm a biochemist, not an electrophysicist! But overall, what it does mean is that the recycled material's structure is subtly different from that of virgin materials, and the batteries you get as a result can have a longer lifespan and degrade more slowly. Indeed, the virgin material test cells in this study only manage 65% of the charge cycles of the recycled cells. Shiny. So the end result of it all is that we've got a good plan. All we need to do is make sure that there are some rules for folks to follow, and make sure these fine words and pilot projects make it to actual functioning processes. Because if we do, we've got one solid part of a plan to stay living on this rock. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back soon with more. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There's a link down in the video description. If you want a more generalised news roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles, check out our news roundup show every weekend. And don't forget we produce videos every single day on this network for you to enjoy, ranging from deep dives and features to tutorials, unboxings and reviews. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and our other channel Transport Evolve Take 2 and give the bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right! They are our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons Chris Maxwell, Pedro Mura Binheiro, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, David Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leong, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tazarin the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Rory Litwin, Jim Burness, Chris Asenta, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, Redar, JP Fagerback, Russ, John Lyons, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, Christopher Lee Jones, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and Ian! Want to be part of this amazing list? You can join Patreon at the link below. You can hit the join button. 
below, or you can support us on YouTube, or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. Links are below. And if you're unable to support us financially, just know that watching the video and sharing it makes a difference to our ad revenue and keeps the the algorithm keeps the algorithm well fed on things other than human souls. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!